With us this morning is Pat Cullen, the RCN's General Secretary and Chief Executive. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, before we talk about the strike, where have, we actually, where have you actually got to in the negotiations? Um, well, put simply, um, we aren't in negotiations. I have made many attempts on behalf of not just the 300,000 nurses that have been balloted, but the 500,000 plus nurses that I represent. And unfortunately, this government hasn't engaged with the Royal College of Nursing as yet. When you say they haven't in, engaged, and, and uh, do you mean that you've asked for a meeting and um, whoever happened to be health secretary at the time said, no, I'm not talking to you? Well, the last uh, health secretary that I'd contact with was Sajid Javid. And since then, we have made multiple attempts to try and engage with the health secretary. Um, the two, uh, the current one and the previous one that was very short lived. Uh, and both of those people have not um, as yet met with the Royal College of Nursing. Uh, but presumably, the, the actual employer here, anyway, is not Therese Coffey, who's now the health secretary, but the NHS. Presumably, you are talking to NS NHS managers. Of course we're talking and, to And where have you got to with them? Well, of course, the NHS managers will say very clearly to me that it's not within their gift to um, negotiate with me on pay for their employees, which are our nurses. Uh, so I'm bounced back to government. And that's right. That's absolutely right. Those employers do not have the authority uh, to actually negotiate because Agenda for Change sits at, um, which is the pay framework for our nursing staff, sits within the domain of government to make those decisions. What, um, what is it that you want? Um, what, what is your sort of central demand? Well, first of all, for nurses to be paid a fair and decent wage. That's what we're asking for. And our ask is 5% above the rate of inflation. That's very clear. It's not about nurses um, being greedy. Uh, it's not about wanting the same um, preferential treatment that was given to the bankers and others by this government. We're asking for them to be pay paid a fair and decent wage so that we can retain them in the health service looking after our patients. Well, um, let's leave the bankers aside because they're not paid by the government. They're not paid by the taxpayer. 5% uh, above inflation this morning is 14.9%. That's quite a hefty rise. Well, Trevor, you did mention the bankers, but if you looked and, um, of course, we attended the Conservative Party conference and we listened very carefully to what they say, and it does seem that those people, like bankers and others, are very carefully looked after. What we have seen very clearly from this government is that they haven't managed to actually recognise that they cannot have a health service without nurses. We heard this morning from ministers coming on this programme and talking about how they're going to deliver on their A's, their B's, their C's and their D's. And what I want to say to each and every one of them, they'll deliver on none of those if they do not understand there's an N in the alphabet, because each one of those depend on nurses. We deliver nothing in health and social care without having a nurse. And yet they have just seemed to not understand that they need to understand that there's an N in the alphabet and they need to respect nurses if they want to retain them in the health service. If we can stop our nurses having to leave the health service and indeed social care to find jobs in supermarkets, in restaurants and other places so that they can pay their bills. I think that's an incredible indictment on any minister to sit here and not actually recognise what they are doing to the health service and to patients. Do you, um, are you getting any more mileage, if I can put it that way, from the devolved administrations? Uh, Scotland is a separate negotiation, I, I guess, as it would be Northern Ireland. Well, certainly in Scotland, there was a higher percentage um, pay award um, uh, granted this time around. It certainly didn't come anywhere near uh, what nurses require in order to make a decent living. Um, this isn't, they're not asking for, um, as I've said, golden handshakes out of this. They're not. They're asking for a decent living wage. Um, they're not getting that. So no government, and of course we know the situation in Northern Ireland, so we'll not go there. But as yet, none of the devolved administrations have come up to the standard that we expect them to for our nursing staff. So you'll be going back to the Scots and 
Stormont when it, when there is a government in Stormont there is such a thing. Um, and saying that nurses need a bit more. We've already done that, yes. And of course, in those 300,000 ballot papers that went out, they went out right across the UK, not just in England. Well, let's talk about what that uh, means. Um, we don't have any experience of a nurses strike. How would that work? I mean, what if you walk out, what happens to patients who are in intensive care, patients who are going to be dehydrated, patients mm -hmm. who need mm -hmm. uh, their dressings changed? OK. Well, actually, we do have um, experience of a nurse's strike. Um, and I had the privilege, but actually the sadness of leading the first nurses' strike in the 103 years history of this college in late 2019, 2020, in Northern Ireland, when we actually had no government. Um, and during that time, what I would say to each person and member of the public listening this morning, our nursing staff, and I am a nurse of 42 years, will never walk away from you. And during that strike in Northern Ireland, we did not walk out on our patients. Uh, we made sure our patients were still cared for. Now, of course, there will be disruption because the clue is in the title. It is about withdrawal of labour. Uh, but we still continue to provide uh, um, life-preserving services during that time. And there are certain ser services that we will absolutely never withdraw labour from. But, but what action would you take? Because, uh, in a way, you, if I may put it this way, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that we are going to hold the government's feet to the fire, but actually... If it becomes difficult for anybody, we're going to look after them. Well, there's life-preserving services that we will always continue to provide because we are a regulated profession. We will absolutely not just down tools and leave our patients and abandon them. We haven't done it to date um, and we'll not do it now. We certainly will not. Um, but there will be a withdrawal of nursing staff and we have very clear um, clinical protocols in place about how we manage that on a day of a strike, about the number of staff that will remain to provide services for our patients and those that will then, obviously, that you will see, should the time come, um, that will be, be seen on picket lines. And that will be managed very carefully and very safely. And the other thing that I will say, that during the strike in Northern Ireland, which lasted for eight days, um, and again, if our nurses' ballot um, for strike action in any of our, our UK countries as we move forward in November. Uh, we will cause no further or additional okay. risk to patients that's already created as a consequence of this government turning their back on nursing as we stand. Well, if I may, can I be specific about this? Will midwives, for example, be involved in this action? In Northern Ireland, we certainly didn't withdraw midwives um, at the time of our strike action. No, we didn't. And the nurses? Uh, with, with ambulances waiting three, four, five, six, seven, eight? And yes, and I go back hours. to the point that I made in the A, the B, the C and the D. None of those will be, will, will be delivered, absolutely not. And why do we see those ambulances queued up at the minute? We see them queued up because there's not the nursing staff to look after those patients that are in the backs of those ambulances. And what an indictment on a society to actually keep patients, our elderly patients, in the backs of ambulances simply because we have turned our back on nursing staff. Um, and finally, if I may ask briefly, what will you do if the government says we're going to treat nurses like police officers and make it unlawful for them to strike? Well, we heard a lot this morning about democracy, didn't we? And this is the democratic right of the worker to actually, first of all, belong to a trade union and then have representation. And why are we representing our nurses? Because there's no government speaking up for them at the minute. And again, that would be another nail in the coffin for this government to say that they're actually going to silence the workers, the people at the front line, the clinical staff looking after patients day and daily. So I think that would be a very sad day if we moved to that position. And certainly our Royal College of Nursing will have something to say about it. Pat Collin, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.